watching somebody doing something naked on TV and pleasuring something for the heck of it, yeah, you get a reward right away, but you didn't have to work for it. What leg exercises are good to do if you have bad knees? The simplest answer to that is the ones that don't hurt. Your body has evolved to create pain as a way of telling you not to do certain things. Everyone is different. Two people can have the exact same knee injury. One person can do an exercise effectively with no pain. The other one can't. And so my best advice is try all of them with very light weights using perfect technique and slower movements. Two seconds up, four seconds down. Take your time. Squeeze the weight. Don't use momentum and don't ego lift. And if you try an exercise and it feels good, then do it. If you try another exercise and it doesn't feel good, then don't do it. Certain exercises I've had struggles to do with are because of my hips. I had hip surgery. And so for me, walking lunges, for example, horrible. For many people, walking lunges, not a problem. I never had troubles with my knees squatting. For other people, they did. For me, leg extensions hurt more on my knees than it does to squat or leg press. Some other people, it is in fact the exact opposite. Should I blast trend at 15? I go by quote YOLO. Uh, no, you shouldn't blast trend at 15. You only live once, but you're probably going to want to live past the age of 16. And so you may as well wait till you're a bit older. I mean, 16 at least before you start blasting trend or possibly 17. I mean, that bigger that number gets before using trend, the better. And so when you're not sure about whether you should do something when it comes to PDs, think the longer I wait, the better. How can I find the motivation to work out harder than last time when I'm too happy relaxing? Okay, that is a great question. Uh, very difficult to answer, but I think you need to know this. The greatest things in life come through effort. If it's easy, it might feel good right now, but it's not going to bring you as much joy or reward as if you have to work very hard to achieve that goal. Let's talk about me on a bike. It took me years to ride as fast as I can right now. The work it took to get the cardio to be able to do what I do, it took a lot of work. And so when I go on a bike race and I win, it's very exciting because I know and remember all the years, the thousands of hours of suffering that got to get me to that point. If I just went on the bike the first day and won the first race, is it really exciting? Where's the joy in that? I tried the first race and I won. Great. Yay. How hard did I have to work for that? I didn't. And so it's not very rewarding. Same to do with muscles. If you snapped your fingers and woke up tomorrow like Chris Bumstead, yeah, that'd be great. Cool. Look, I'm Chris Bumstead. Look at my muscles. Fantastic. But you would not remember the pain, the hardship, the hours, the sweat, the dedication that you put into getting that physique. And so the reward is in the effort. If it's just watching somebody doing something naked on TV and pleasuring something for the heck of it, yeah, you get a reward right away, but you didn't have to work for it. Also, if you're sniffing creatine or using recreational drugs and that's the only form of happiness you're getting, it's not that good. It's much better to work hard for something, whether it's mental, physical, social, spiritual, putting a lot of effort into it and knowing that the effort you put in right now, the sacrifices that you're doing to get that reward later, that is what's truly going to make you happy. And so if you're sitting back, relaxing, watching Netflix and thinking, why would I go to the gym? That's a lot of work. Yeah. And it's going to take years to get to that physique that you want. But think of this. In five years, when you look back to when I answered this question and you think, I just wanted to sit back and relax. If you didn't and you dedicated yourself to doing that, imagine how that's going to have a positive impact on your life. Not just on yourself, the knowledge that you put in that work, but on your ability to attract a mate. Think of it. Do you really think your partner is going to want you and respect you for you just sitting down and relaxing all the time? How long is that going to be attractive? Versus they know that you studied your ass off. You got a career. You studied. You are a provider. You worked hard to build that physique. You have that six pack. They know you put in the work. Whatever you're doing, you need to work hard to get that. They will recognize it. You will recognize it. And so I highly suggest that day when you're not motivated, think to your future. Remember, the work you put in now will get you to your dream later on. Trend burns fat directly. Nothing directly burns fat. Burning fat comes from a calorie deficit. And so whatever it is that's helping you to burn fat, it's only helping you to burn fat because you're in a calorie deficit. Trend helps you to build more muscle. It's causing nutrient partitioning to occur. And so some of the foods that you're eating, it's turning to muscle. And so because of that, you have less calories available to turn to fat. And so in the end, you're in a calorie deficit, allowing your body fat to be burned. And so is it directly burning fat? No, it's not going to the fat cell and lighting a match and saying, poof, you're burnt. 
It doesn't work like that. And so, no, trend isn't directly burning fat, but does it really matter? What really matters is you're in a calorie deficit and you're getting leaner. Will I ever stop growing? I lift at the gym and I'm 50. I started lifting at 10. You might be thinking, yeah, see, clearly you stopped growing, but I was done growing at the age of 13. My twin is three inches shorter than me. My family's all short. My mom is five feet tall. My dad's five, five at most. And so you're not stunting your growth by lifting weights. And so lift the weights. Stop worrying about being tall or short from lifting weights. If you're naturally a test booster such as yours, what happens if you stop using them? Thanks, coach. And so, yeah, we have G test and three test. These are natural test boosters that can increase your natural production by up to two to 400 nanograms per deciliter. And essentially what happens is you go back to where you were. It'd be like saying, hey, if you go in a bulk and you add in 500 calorie surplus and you go back to maintenance, what's going to happen? Well, you're no longer going to be in a surplus. You're not going to be gaining all that extra fat, muscle, whatever. You're going to go back to baseline. And so no, it's not going to shut you down. It's not going to cause you to have lower levels of testosterone than you had in the first place. But at the same time, you can't just take one bottle, take it, and wow, suddenly you have the highest levels of test your entire life. Some of the ingredients are, in fact, vitamins and minerals. And if you're deficient in those, that is causing your testosterone to go up. Now, if you take that away and you suddenly are deficient again, your testosterone levels are going to go down. And so, yes, it's safe to take, but no, it's not going to boost your testosterone forever. What do you think about going past failure every single set? I think that no one does that. Even if you tried, you would at least want to warm up first. If you're going past failure on every single set, I think that you can do that if you're properly warmed up. I think that if you do that, you make sure you don't do too many sets. If you're not overtraining, you can do it. But most certainly, there are better ways to train. It is a way to train, but I don't think it's the best one. Do you ever think about competing in a bodybuilding show again? The answer is yes, I think about it. And then I think about what would I miss or what would I lose if I did? And I'm thinking about, I would lose the energy to bike race. When I diet, I obviously have to be in a calorie deficit. If I want to get back down to 4% body fat, I'm going to have to eat fewer calories. My body fat percentage goes down. I have less energy. I have great energy right now and I'm under 8% body fat, but that is about the limit of what I can handle. If I eat less than this, I'm not going to have energy. And so I don't want to go through the lack of energy. I don't think it would even make me look better. Some people would argue, yeah, the leaner, the better. I don't think that getting below 7% to 65 is going to make you look better. It looks cool. It's impressive, but it's not necessarily better. I already feel absolutely shredded. I feel peeled. So I don't think there's any need to that. Also at 48 and having injured triceps from having bike accidents, I'm not going to look as good as I once did. I don't think I would enjoy the challenge as I did before. I've done 59 shows in the past. I placed top four at the Niagara Pro. I don't think I can beat that. And so to me, I don't see any point. While I have you here, of course, I want to promote Geo2 Max with NMN. You know how amazing this is for your endurance. It is in fact my number one selling supplement. That goes without saying, highly recommend it, especially if you're into the gym, doing cardio, and you want increased endurance. Interested in any of the supplements, the cookbooks, training books, coach plans, all that kind of stuff, please use code GREG. Don't forget, that will give you 10% off. And so there you have it. The answers to your questions, hopefully understood, ending it here. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm, watch those two bloops. Of course, drop a like and a comment. It helps with the algorithm, the cookbooks, the training books, the coaching plans by me and my team, all the stuff you see in the back. Don't forget, code Greg, 10% off. And we have the free diet and training program. You can also get it on the website as well as the newsletter. You can join that. And until next time, I am out.